Today we're talking about Canon Log on the EOS R. I'm gonna share with you what I feel are the best settings, and then we're gonna get into how to properly expose this. Let's do it. Well, my name is Tony, and today we're talking about Canon Log on the EOS R. A few weeks ago, I did a video that explained the difference between picture profiles and log footage, and got a ton of feedback that people would love to see a video on the settings that I use. So that's why we are here today. I'm gonna go through some of the settings that I use. I wanna show you how to properly expose it, because that will take care of a lot of the issues that you have with log, and uh, just kind of give you some examples of how to use log footage. Canon's uh, log footage on the EOS R is one of the easiest logs I've used. It's better than the 5D Mark IV, way better. Uh, it's better than the C200, it's just easier to use. Uh, it's also easier than, you know, some of the Sony footage than Panasonic. It's just, it's just an easy log to work with. So, uh, what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna talk through some of the settings right in the camera, and then I'll go through some tips. Before we jump into the camera, uh, let's talk about setting up some of your just standard video things. Now, when it comes to video settings, camera in, in general, some of it is creative input, uh, but there's a lot of rules that you just need to live by. So go ahead and set up your camera for your white balance, whatever your room uh, light temperature is. Uh, we'll probably be shooting in 24 frames per second. You wanna double your frame rate, so that puts us at 1 50th. And then uh, just for this video's sake, we're gonna leave the aperture wide open. By the way, I am shooting on the 35 millimeter F1.8. Uh, if you've noticed that the framing is a little bit tighter, I wanted to see what that looks like in this room. What do you think? Do you like this better than the 24 millimeter, what I typically use for my videos? Uh, I think it looks pretty good. We'll see what it looks like in the computer though. Uh, so 1.8 and then our ISO when we're shooting in log is uh, best at 400. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't go over or under, it's just, it's gonna look best. It's native ISO is at 400. Uh, I did a wedding last weekend and I was shooting up to 8,000, 10,000 ISO. Uh, there's some grain in there, but it's a pleasant grain. It's easy to kind of fix it and, and manipulate it so that it kind of looks natural. Obviously though, if you're shooting at 400 ISO, you're gonna get the very best uh, that you can. So, now that you've got your standard video settings locked in, why don't we go into the menu setting, uh, pull up the log settings, and we'll just kind of talk through that. Okay, well welcome to the back of my camera. Uh, just a few things, I'll show you the viewing that I have set up. I've got quite a bit of information here. I can see my frames per second. Um, I can see my audio levels. I can also see a histogram, and if you need to get to that, all you have to do is go to your yellow or the wrench, and then go over to like uh, four, shooting info display, go into your screen info settings, and then you can create up these uh, presets for what you see. And so I've got uh, number one, it has all of that information, and you can just choose which ones you want on and off. Um, it's really important to have the histogram on and I'll explain that when we talk through some of the uh, the other features. I also have my grid display on. Uh, that helps with the rule of thirds and that kind of fun stuff. So quite a bit of information here on the camera, but uh, it's good to be able to see all this. So now that we have our screen set up the way we need, let's go into the camera settings for uh, log. Now, the way that you get to log, if you don't know, is in your camera menu, number four. And so then you see log settings. We'll go through these real quick. First one is turn on log. You have either eight or 10 bit. 10 bit only is recorded externally. So that means you have to have a monitor and it only shoots 4K. So uh, if those two things, if you wanna record internally or if you want to record in 1080, say 60 frames, or even 120 frames per second, you're limited to 8-bit, which for the most part is okay. 10-bit is amazing looking, but that's for your hero shots. You don't really need to use it, and it just makes your running gun setup uh, not so neat and tidy. So we're gonna choose 8-bit. Now moving on to the next one, View Assist adds a LUT. It's like a BT709. Uh, kind of a rec LUT right on top of this monitor. It doesn't put it on your output or uh, on the final uh, SD card file. It just puts it on this monitor. And so what happens is if you turn it off, then 
you have a really flat looking screen and it's hard to see what you're trying to record. This is a, this is a really nice feature that they added. I'm really glad that this, this is built into the, the Canon. I've added um, like some EOS HD profiles on the 1DX Mark II and it's just really hard to see what you're filming when it's all gray. So you want the view assist on. That lets you see it in actual like contrast and color. Next setting is the color matrix. EOS original or neutral are your options. Uh, for EOS original, I use that if I'm trying to blend together cinema cameras or if I want a really cinematic look. Otherwise, if you're trying to blend uh, like say two cameras, say one with a picture profile, then you would want neutral. I think it looks a little bit more like a picture profile-esque. It's really up to you and I would play around with both of them, uh, but I, for the most part, if I'm shooting in log, I need to match it with some cinema cameras. So I've noticed that the cinema EOS original looks more like C100 Mark II footage, uh, which is what this is right now, um, or uh, C200, all of those kind of cinema lenses or cameras, cinema cameras. Next setting, let's go down to the characteristics and I'll explain this. Uh, this basically just adds some looks to your, uh, it's basically the settings of log. And for me, I've noticed that the strength is the big one that you need to play with. I've never moved the saturation or hue. I've never really needed to. Uh, with the strength, when you add in sharpness, it, when it's at zero, it just looks a little muddy to me. Like it, it just doesn't look great. So I bumped it up to four and I shot a video like that and it almost looked iPhone-esque where it over sharpens it because the image isn't quite as good as what it should be. So I've kind of landed somewhere in the middle here at two. Uh, and those are the only things that I've done. You're, you can play with all of these and I would suggest uh, go film some videos, the style that you want to do, film some videos with different settings because that will let you know what you like and what you don't like. That's the way that I figured out these settings. So characteristics are 200. Other than that, uh, those are what your log settings need to be. A uh, quick note here in this menu, I also did white balance correction. I always have it on B2. Um, I've just noticed that if you move it a little bit more blue, it takes away some of those like pinks and reds that you see in skin sometimes. Just looks a little bit more natural. That's a pro tip, don't feel like you need to use it, but that's something that I do in all of my uh, Canon cameras. All right, I think that's about it. Uh, real quick, another note, if you look at mine, it's full HD. I'll show you which, um, which video setting I use. I use uh, either all I 24 frames per second or all I 60 frames per second. And basically the difference between all I and IPB is the compression rate that it does. This is gonna be your best looking footage. So always be shooting in that all I um, video format. So either one of those. If you're shooting in 24 frames per second, then you need to be at 1 50th. If you're shooting in 60 frames per second, then you actually need to turn up your shutter speed up to 1 25th, which sucks out some more light. But if you're shooting in 60 frames, then you can go into post. You can interpret the footage as it's 24 frames per second and actually have slow motion uh, 2.4 times, which I use quite a bit. Um, I have a video, I can link it below, that shows you how to interpret that footage. It's in my file management video. So make sure to check that out if that's something you're interested in. Other than that, you can get to the the audio levels. That's all through the Q settings. And the way that I'm easily accessing that is through this button right here. I have it set up as my main, my main setting. Okay, so that's all for the settings. Now, let's talk about exposure. When you're looking at log footage, you don't want to, um, the biggest thing is you don't want to underexpose. When you are exposing too low, uh, you just cannot bring up shadows, which is kind of opposite what you want to do for photos. Usually you expose for the sky and then you bring up your shadows and you get all this extra dynamic range. I've noticed with log footage, if you underexpose and you try and bring up your shadows, it looks really, really bad. So uh, what you need to do is on your histogram, if you're not familiar with the histogram, all the way to the left is your shadows and your darks, all the way to your right is your whites 
and your highlights. And so you wanna have a nice little mountain that goes up and in the middle it kind of peaks and then it comes back down. So right now we're pretty far underexposed. So what I'll do is I'll just turn up my ISO um, somewhere in here. That's probably pretty close to being properly exposed and it almost looks washed out on your screen. But you gotta remember when you put the, it's got a LUT on it and when you put it in the computer, it's gonna be a lot darker. Now the only thing you wanna watch for is right now we're clipping on some whites. I'm guessing that's the uh, trackpad in the back which is complete white. But I wouldn't worry about that because this is your image and you wanna make sure that the image is properly exposed. Um, you can bring down some of your highlights, but this is gonna give you the best looking image. Um, even though we had to raise our ISO to 1250 opposed to 400, which would give us the best looking image, even though the ISO is up higher, this is gonna be properly exposed and look way better. I'll give you an example here. So I'll record it here. Now we're recording um, at 1250. Now I'll crank it back down to 400 and I'll show you just what happens when we try and recover some of those blacks in post. You'll notice that when I bring up the shadows when it was at 400, it's really kind of gnarly looking and you get this digital grain that I just, just don't really like. So uh, just make sure that you're recording um, properly exposed. You wanna have that mountain peak about 40% or so on your histogram. And this is something that when you're going, when you're recording, you're gonna notice that it disappears. And so while you're running and gunning, when you're moving your camera around, your exposure changes. And so you have to get comfortable with what is properly exposed in log footage when you're filming. All right, that's about it for exposure. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you've got any tips on how you, uh, you shoot log footage. All right, well, hopefully all of that's really helpful. Um, if you've got any comments or questions about why I set my camera up the way that I do, I would love to chat with you. Go ahead and leave a comment below or feel free to find me on Instagram and send me a DM. Uh, if you've got a specific topic that you'd love to see me cover, leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, I'll also link a couple different videos that I've done, uh, including the log versus picture profiles in the description below. All right, if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. We've, uh, we've gotten quite a few new subscribers in the past few weeks. We're having fun and uh, we're not slowing down. So other than that, uh, hope you have fun. Feel free to leave a comment and uh, leave a link for some of the videos that you're making with your EOS R. I'm really excited about this camera. I'm excited about the new EOS R Mark II rumors that are floating around. Uh, 1DX Mark III just kind of got released and that just gives us a lot of promise for what's happening in the mirrorless world uh, in the future with Canon. So, all right guys, Team Canon, let's do it. Have a good week.